Fi TV is sponsored by Florida Internet and Television. Its member companies connect over 95% of Florida thanks to their $10 billion investment over the past decade into Florida's broadband infrastructure. Ah, Miami. Known for its beautiful beaches, thriving nightlife, tasty cuisine, and diverse cultures. In this edition of Fi TV, we travel to Miami, Florida, which was officially trademarked as the Gateway to the Americas by the Florida Department of State in 2004. It's a global cosmopolitan city and a landmark for those coming into our great country. However, outside of the tourist-friendly South Beach or the hustle and bustle of downtown Miami lies an eclectic and diverse mix of friendly neighborhoods that share bonds of country, heritage, and community. It's also where we find the future speaker of the Florida House of Representatives, Danny Perez, who represents House District 116. As the future speaker of this august body, Speaker Perez is gonna have to lead a house of 119 of his peers that span Florida from the Keys all the way to the Panhandle. After being Speaker of the House comes with the support and trust of your classmates. Speaker Perez was elected in the 2019 class to become the Speaker of the House. So, as we search for Speaker Danny Perez, we're gonna go through a few of the best cafecitas in Miami. We're gonna join him on a journey taking us from his childhood that shaped his path to the career that determined his future. As he begins the second half of his sophomore term, we get a chance to meet Speaker Perez where he spent most of his formative years at none other than Christopher Columbus High School. To learn more about the future speaker and the man behind the podium of the Florida House. Danny Perez, on your way to be speaker. Here we are at Columbus, your high school. We're kicking it off. So um, I think what our goal for this is I want everyone to know kind of the guy that, that I've gotten to know over the last few years, kind of the man behind, behind the future office that you're ascending to. So if you're good, man, I'm just going to roll with some questions about your family. I'm in, man. Let's do it. Okay, cool. All right. So tell me, brothers, sisters, what do you got? So I'm the oldest of three. Okay. I got a sister. Okay, what's your name? Ashley. She's out in Houston. Okay. Uh, Ashley graduated from school. She uh, she got a job out there and she just didn't come back. Good, right. but we miss her. Yeah, we of course. And then uh, my youngest brother, uh, Brian, uh, he's autistic, so he lives with my parents. Okay. Awesome. So he didn't have the opportunity to come to Columbus like I did. Right, right, right. What, right. what, what a cool opportunity. Well, by let's the way. talk about Columbus first. So again. cool. Everybody knows Columbus is better than Belen. Right? Obviously. Obviously. Hands right. are given. I've just lost half of the entire Miami <laughs> audience, but uh, we'll, 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 I'm sure I'll, I'll balance that out. It's later all right. With somebody else. It's all right. So. Um, this school is amazing. It's definitely, it's a path forward in, in relationships, key relationships in Miami. Um, you know, it, it's known as, as one of those brotherhoods here in town. Tell us a little bit about your experience here, here at Columbus. I, I think it sounds so cliche, but it's so true. Like this is where you, you come from, a, become a boy and then you become a man. Right, right. You know, this is that, this is that transition. Right. Uh, this is the best high school in, in the entire country. Of Let's course, get this out of the of way. Course, of uh, fifth best sports program in the entire country. We're talking about the entire country. Right. Uh, more national merit scholars than anyone else uh, in Miami-Dade County. So, I mean, this is just a school where you can excel in academics and sports. Am I done pitching? Did I pitch okay. it enough? Well, let me ask you a question. How did you get in? Yeah, well, <laughs> standards were a lot lower back then. Yeah, a lot lower standards. Uh, they needed some ginger beard for right, diversity, right, right, and right. so they let me in. They're like, he's sort of a red, you know, yeah. diversity. All right, all right. So, so before we get to the high school and kind of the teachers that, that formed your life, let's go back to your mom and dad. Um, when we think about uh, the Perez household, you know, wh what were the lessons that dad instilled in you and your brother and sister? Like, what, what are your memories uh, uh, as a child? Like, like, what's that one lesson your dad wanted that's you to do? That's a great question. I, I would say probably a couple of things. I mean, uh, well, one would be hardworking. I mean, I don't think there is a, a more hardworking family than, than my parents. I mean, they just, they went all in all the damn time. Yeah. Uh, two would be optimism. You know, growing up in a house where you have uh, someone with unique abilities, abilities like my brother, mm -hmm. um, you never really have a bad day. Right. Like, like you understand what real problems are in your right. life. Uh, you know, the car breaking down ain't the biggest problem in the right. world. It just isn't. Right. Um, so it puts things into perspective for you. So our optimism level is like extremely high. I love it. And Brad, yeah. it's actually kind of cool. It's kind of, it's kind of endemic of who you are as well and what we get to see in your. I, your I appreciate it. Side, I agree, so. man. Sometimes people are like, hey, the world is falling, Danny. And I'm like, are you kidding me? I'm like, we're good. I'm like, we're so good right now. We're the best we've ever been. Yeah, right. uh, so I would tell you optimism is number two. and, and 
three would have to be just relationships and family. I mean, I, I treasure relationships so much. Yeah. Um, I'm just so thankful for them. Uh, it's it's what makes your life worth it, man. You know, the people you meet along the way. But sure. I get that from my parents for sure. So so let's talk about your mom a little bit. So, um, you know, usually the, the dad, you know, kind of instills, you know, get tough for the world. And the mom instills a sensitive side. Was it that way or, or what was your mom like? See, they're, they're like hybrids, man. Right. They're like hybrids. So, like, I think when I was younger, I think my mother was more of the disciplinary. And then I think when I got older, I think I might transition a little to my father. Right, right. Uh, but my father's a social butterfly. Yeah, you know, my right. father, I think that's where I get my personality oh, from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's, he's, he's the guy that's working the, he's working the room. Okay. Uh, my mother is a little bit more reserved, um, but, but, but very, I mean, on point. Right. Like, you know, my, my mother doesn't miss a beat. And right. I think she is literally the greatest human being ever created. I love it. Uh, mother love Teresa, it. I think, is, is next to my mother. I, I love yeah. it. Okay, what's your mom and dad's name? So my dad's name is Eugene, and okay. my mom's name is Gelsey's. Messed up, messed up name. Uh, no, I, no, I tell my no, mom no. all the time, I said, Mom, how, how did they come up with this name? But now is where you say, I love you, mom and dad. I love you, mom and dad, yeah, right? Yeah. 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 Perfect, yeah. Just got, got, got to bring it back okay. in. Okay. All right. All right. So, so we move out of the household. Um, you start going to school. You get to Columbus. You know, talk to me about you know, your favorite teacher, you know, how did, how did that teacher or those teachers, and you got to call them out, you know, yeah. <laughs> you know, teach you some lessons that kind of sort of drove you to where you are today? Yeah. Well, he, I mean, Columbus, it, it truly is a brotherhood. Many of the teachers that are here still today came to school here. So, I mean, you'll see teachers that have been here for 30, 40 years and, and they graduated from the school. So they understand what it is to be a Columbus guy. Right. Uh, I would tell you, Mr. Rodriguez, Rene Rodriguez is just, he was a, he's a good man. Uh, also, he's a constituent, yeah. right? Hey. Throw, throw, hey. Let's throw that out there. That's good. That's yeah. good. Uh, That's but one, he was one more secure. There, there it is. <laughs> but he uh, he was he was a teacher here, but he was also my volleyball uh, coach. Yeah. I played basketball and volleyball here. And you know why I like him, Brad? Because he knew how to let me be me mm -hmm. and let me go, right. but knew how to rein me back in just right. enough and discipline me when he had to. Right. So he was stern when necessary, but but let me be me, and I always appreciated that. So so. You know, they talk about all boys, you know, high schools, and most of my friends that went to these, you know, they were like, hey, it was very peaceful. You know, what's your take? There were no girls running around the hallways and things like that. You know, how, how, how did you, you know, did, did it distract you? Did it make you focus more? Look, there are no girls here, uh, but I think Columbus guys do fairly well uh, in the social department. It's not um, what I was asking, uh, you but know? Okay, I was more thinking about your time <laughs> on campus. But, but I'm going to tell oh, we got to throw it out there. You know, this whole like, this, this whole like, no girls thing here, like, right. it's super cool. Think of it this way. Pick the best friends you've ever had in your life, and you get to hang out with them all day right. while doing something that is necessary and getting an education. Sure, of course. It's super cool. I mean, the experience of coming here, the stories here. I mean, I was walking down this hallway, right. and I was, I, I was telling Tanner, I said, hey, Right there is where I used to hang out with my buddies after lunch. Yeah. And we should just kick it after lunch for 10, 20 minutes before we have to go back into the right. classroom. So unique experience, totally worth it. That's cool. All right, so so um, I had the good pleasure of meeting the Dean of Discipline who knew you on a first name basis. It was yeah. amazing. You know? <laughs> we, maybe we'll talk about that another. another <laughs> Mr. McKee is a good man, also another constituent. Yeah, so, so let's talk about um, sports, right? Basketball, volleyball, you know, I mean, any, any life lessons that you learned there? I mean, they're both team sports. I mean, I'm assuming outside hitter, right, for uh, volleyball? For, for volleyball, <laughs> and here's the best part. Uh, never the best player, but a necessary one nonetheless. Yeah, right. Rodriguez, I think he nailed it. I'll never forget my last year. Uh, everyone's getting super cool awards. I think I got the coolest award, unsung hero. <laughs> so cool, so cool, and he's just like, Totally necessary guy. The person I see, I love super. Uh, but but no, I mean I think I'm, I'm a big fan of the team sports and and this school I think what it does is it teaches you the best of both worlds. It teaches you the academics from a books perspective, sure. but it teaches you the real world. Right. And I'm so concerned that sometimes we don't get the real world experience. Right. Uh, you know, here's where I sold sandwiches because I wanted to buy rims for my car. Right, right. right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, the dean of discipline wasn't happy. I got, you know, I got in trouble for it. But it was, it was worth it at the time. And I learned how to barter and, and sell sandwiches for two bucks when I was buying for 50 cents. It's called the free market, baby. Free market, man. Capitalism, it's beautiful. <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> All right. So, um, so as we think about this, I think your, your thoughts on Columbus, how did it prepare you for the next stage, college and, and law school? You know, how did this place get you ready for that? I think uh, at Columbus, you have people from all walks of life. Um, you have white, African-American, Hispanic, Asians, Jewish, Christian, Catholic, Muslim. You have everything here. And it's a Catholic school, right. which is so ironic, but so cool at the same time. But it teaches you um, how everyone is, is unique and different in their own way. Yeah. Um, but you can always find some sort of common ground with people. And I think that that kind of helped me, not just in my next step when I went to college, but even where I stand today, Brad, it kind of, you know, I always have an open door policy for that same reason. Um, I got to hear everyone out, man. Um, and and I kind of that, I learned that 
here when I was running for class president, obviously. I love it. Uh, I love it. Successfully. So politics were in your blood even here. So, successfully, here. yeah. It was. <laughs> it was. So, um, right, well, out a lot. Well, listen, I, I, we, we, we're gonna, we got a lot more to talk about, yeah. but I need some coffee. I, I hear there's this thing called Cuban coffee. We got to try while we're down here. Where are we going? Come on, man. All right. We're going to go to La Carreta. Okay. All right. We can't say La Carreta. No. No, we're in District 116. That, that's what Brad would say. But uh, that, That's yeah. why I'm helping you out. We're going to go to La Carreta, the Vols family, great family. Uh, they own it. So we're going to go there. We're going to have some Cuban coffee. And I want you to meet, I want you to meet my people. Off to our first taste of Miami. Danny takes us to his favorite spot where I learned more than I ever could have expected. La Carreta, a staple of the community owned by the Valls family who also own Valencia's. Both of these restaurants are must stops for Democrat and Republican candidates alike for president for the last 40 years. This place is rich with conversation on local affairs, culture, and Cuban American politics. From the moment we walked in, we are greeted by the Round Table, a group of guys who have been coming here so long that they have a plaque dedicated to their seat at the table. After sampling some of the amazing Cuban food at this restaurant, Danny and I sit down to learn about the impacts this community has had on him. Hey Danny, you take me to La Carreta. La Carreta. La Carreta. <laughs> You're in. It's, it's, it's todo bien, it's amazing. There you I mean, go. This place is iconic, we know. Okay, so so let's get down on this food. What, All right. what'd, you, what'd you get for us here? I got you a little bit of everything, man. Okay. But I got you some empanadas. Okay. This this is just amazing. All right. Uh, got some meat inside. Let me know what you think. But but save some save some room. Okay. Right here. Oh my god. This is a croqueta. Mm. Mm. This is I mean All insane. Right. Good All stuff. Right. Maybe put a little lemon sometimes. Sometimes people eat it with crackers. Okay. All right. But this. Mm. Mm. This is good stuff, man. Mm. You know. All right, so I can feel myself getting a little fatter. Yeah. Let's let's just drink some of this Cuban coffee. I can't give you too much, man. Okay. Because here's the problem. I drink a lot of it. Yeah, yeah, but you're not from Miami. Okay. Right. Only the Miami people can have the whole cup. Okay. All right. So I'm going to take it easy with you, all right? All right. I appreciate that. Go easy on the new guy. So if you notice at the top, it has a little bit of foam. Mm-hmm. We we'll call it espumita. Espumita? It's like a little foam that we make with the coffee and the sugar. And you whip it up. Yep. And when you whip it up, that's what comes to the top. It's like the sweet part of the coffee. Okay. All right. Well, we're going to toast. The La Carreta. There you go, my man. Cheers. Hey, thanks for coming to Miami. Hey, man. It's great to be here. Good stuff. All right. Well, look, we can get down on a lot of conversation, but I hear so there are some guys inside we need yeah. to go talk to. So inside, there's a table of about 10 guys, uh, and they're called La Mesa Redonda, which means the round table. Right. And these are like the godfathers of my community. I love so it. So I want you to go inside. Let's go meet I them. want you to meet them. Okay. Uh, and then let's sit down and chat. All right. I All love right. it. We're bringing this food, though. Let's do it. We're not leaving it. Um, all right. So you're at Florida State. Obviously, you're in the capital of Florida. There had to be a few moments where you kind of like looked over the, the keg, looked over the homecoming, queen, homecoming king runner-up, and you looked up the hill and you looked at the capital and said, Maybe that's going to be for me, or or no? Did it cross uh, your mind? Maybe I, I. So I got a sweet little internship uh, in the Capitol to answer phones because we were going through the middle of the, the Marlins Park right. dilemma here in yeah. Miami, and they needed someone that spoke some Spanish in the Capitol. So I, I got in there. And There's a some few phones. in there, but one more is always <laughs> yeah. more helpful. Yeah, they definitely need some help. Okay. Uh, but but honestly, it was never really in my plan. I'm going to be very honest. Right. I, I I enjoyed service, but I never knew how I would give back, right. or when I would give back. Right. That was kind of. Uh, let God, you know, right. script its course the way he wants to, and whenever it happens, it happens. It's always amazing. His plan's always better, right? I, I got that. All right, so you leave uh, Florida State. Did you go straight to law school? I went straight to law school. Okay. I went to Loyola in New Orleans. I actually wanted to come back home. Right. And uh, my father had said, you know, uh, you're, you're not ready to come back home yet. You know, I think you still need to go out there, meet more people. And you were thinking UM. I was thinking, actually, school. I want to go to FIU. FIU. FIU, which is in District 116. Um, FIU because it was a state school, so tuition was cheaper. Right. And, you know, student right, sure. debt in today's world is insane. Right. So I said, you know, I wanted to come back home and I got into FIU, but instead I went to Loyola. Uh, I got a scholarship there. And right. right when I got there, I didn't know a soul. Right. Uh, right. A little bit of a different culture than Miami. Sure best decision ever yeah just good people man Louisiana just has wholesome people yeah and, and so so tell me like it, you know everyone has heard of Loyola Law School so but and the network is amazing I mean when you were there were you already kind of in networking mode for what's coming next I was but not on purpose okay so I got there and didn't know anyone got to meet everyone and uh Law school's three years. Uh, after my second year, um, the, the law school voted me to be their, their 
was law school president. Wait, wait, so you've been student body president twice now, right? Right, right, right. right. Okay, uh, right. The law school one was cool, man. Right. Um, I got to meet so many, so many interesting people in New Orleans, uh, great food, and uh, I started to expand my network. Some of those guys and girls that I met back then are still my best friends today, right, and right. we were able to do the study abroad trips and all that good right. stuff, so um, I'm actually going back to New Orleans in October for Jazz Fest, right, right. Um, which it's is a, a thing. Right. super, it's super a cool thing. festival, yep. right, right? Uh, so I was in New Orleans for three years, and then I'm so a little piece of, of New Orleans never left you. It's, 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 it'll be part of you forever, basically. A hundred percent. To the point that when my wife and I were looking for a house, I said, find whatever it is. Right. I don't care. I have one request. She goes, all right, what is it? I said, it has to have a front porch. Right, right. Because that's Cause just, you got to see the neighbors. You right? got to see the neighbors. Right. That's right. New Orleans, man. People right. are outside. All right, so um, let's get into it. So how'd you, meet your, how'd you meet your wife? Talk to us about the family. Yeah. So uh, when I moved back here, um, uh, friends set us up. Uh, we were both third wheels. Right. Not a mistake. We went to a birthday party, and uh, and we were set up there. And two years later, we were married. You know, I think it was it was one of those one of those instances that when you just you know you know. And I'm I'm a blessed man, and she's given me the greatest blessing ever, which are two right. children. Now, when I met you, she was pregnant with your first right, daughter, right? right? And, and and tell what are your kids' names? So my my oldest daughter is two and a half. Her name is Camila. Yeah. Uh, Camila is funny, man. Yeah, yeah, I'm talking about. She's a trip. Like, like sticks after her dad. Totally. Yeah. Okay, totally. Of course. Right. Um, but she's a, she's smart as a whip, right. but but so loving. She has such a big heart, yeah. and it's actually great to see. Uh, and then my youngest is Matias, and Matias is a year and a half. Yeah. And he's such a boy. He's a boy's boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's the guy that you know goes face first off the sofa, and you're like, dude, why would you do that? And he gets up laughing. Right. He's right. a boy. Right. Um, but but just so loving. He's when you walk into the house, he runs and gives you the biggest hug and makes everything worth it. I love it. I love it. Well, look, we want to hear about more. But you've got some friends that own an incredible meat shop, yeah. meat, meat store. We're going to get some meat. I want right. you to see this for yourself. Right. It is the the best steaks right. that you can buy anywhere in the state of Florida. It. Josh's Premium Meats. I want you to go there. You have to be my best friend. All right. Cool guy, let's head that can way. Can we eat a little more of this before we go? If you can eat all this, you're gonna have the biggest stomach ache ever, man. Uh, I'm just gonna take a quick bite, all right? Hit it. All right, let's go.